Hey everybody, Rick with Rick's Adventures. In this video, I want to talk to you about getting your Thai driver's license and motorcycle so license. So with that said, let's get on with the show. Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you today about getting your Thai motorcycle or your Thai driver's license. I just went through this and uh, thought it might be helpful to you and I'd give you a little insight of how I went about it and the cost associated. Uh, I had decided, first I'll give you a little input of why I decided to get these. You can get international licenses. Uh, I know I can in the United States. I go to AAA, take some passport photos and pay $35 show I have a valid U.S. driver's license, and they write out one that's accepted in, I think, 140 or 50 countries, something like that. And in Thailand, that is accepted by the Thailand police. Uh, it's just a card, you know, piece of paper that opens up, almost looks like a chintzy type of passport in a way, and has some information, your pictures uh, put on it, your passport photo. Now, the downside to that is, one, it's only good for one year. It costs $35 every time you renew it. And if, you, uh, if you're out driving, be sure you have it and your license from the state. You do need to have both together if you get pulled over. You can't just show the international license. And uh, the other downside I see to this and why I decided to get my Thai license is because, you know, Thai police don't necessarily read English. You know, the date formats are different over here. Of course, they look at that. They're going to see your picture, but they're going to question and take more time checking this out because how do they know until they figure out uh, by your license if you're driving on an expired license, <clears throat> excuse me, or if you're on a valid license. So I, that part I didn't like. Uh, the other reason I decided to do it is because a lot of times whenever you travel, if you go into a hotel here like I do, I, you when you get your retirement visa, you are going to give them a permanent address. It's called a Tabian Ban. And then when you go into a hotel, you'll notice that they will always take your passport. And when they take your passport, that's because the Thai government wants to be able to track you. And I covered this in another video, but I'll go through it real quick. So basically, the hotel then is responsible to scan your passport, fill it in electronically on a computer, and then the government knows you're there. Well, then when you go back home, if you're living in a residence like I am over here, then I'm responsible and I have to fill out another uh, TM30 form. So every time I travel, they take a picture of my or copy of my passport at a hotel because they're responsible to track me. Then whenever I leave and I'd come back, since I'm not at a hotel, I'm at a house, and I'm responsible to file it. Well, if you travel around Thailand a lot, like I'm doing, and going every weekend someplace new, that's that's a pain in the ass. So what I've heard, and the reason I decided to do this was. If I got these licenses, their you know official driver's license for Thailand, then I could use these for identification whenever I went in, and there wouldn't have to be these TM30s filled out. I know that uh, Tia a lot of times use her ID or her government ID, and they accept that fine at the hotel, and then they don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it. So it kind of simplifies it. Uh, it has worked that way for me so far, but guys, I don't guarantee that's how it's going to work every time. You know, this is Thailand, and you never know how things are going to work. But so far, it's been a benefit. Uh, the other benefit I see is if I get pulled over, you know, as soon as I show this and the police see it's an official Thai driver's license, it's, you know, it's go on. And they do have checkpoints here. They pull over people a lot of times, and a lot of times, especially if you're in the... Uh, outer regions, let's say, not in the big city, but you're out in the farm country. They set up lots of checkpoints, and they're checking driver's license and just, you know, for uh, DUI, that type of thing. So I like the idea. I can just show my license. They just wave me on through. So now then I'm going to cover how I went and I got this. Uh, because I got my retirement visa through an agent in the Pattaya area, uh, T and I decided we'd take four or five days and just take a vacation, go back to Jom Tien and stay on the beach for a few days and enjoy beach life for a while. And while we were there, I'd set up an appointment and I decided to let my agent handle it on getting my driver's license. The reason I did that is because it just simplified the whole process. Uh, if you go on your own 
from what I've been told, now I don't know this for a fact, but I've had several other uh, expats tell me this, you'll have to go through like a, an eight hour day class or a couple days worth of eight hours. Then you go through and you do the testing. So you're gonna tie up, you know, two, three days pretty easily to get it from what I was hearing from everybody. But if you go through an agent, of course, it's just like getting the retirement visa. You pay a little bit for it, but they have the ins and the outs with the, you know, the different offices of government, so they can shorten the time span a lot. So to get both of my licenses, now I, before I do that, let me preempt that. I have a valid Missouri driver's license, and I have no record of any type of, you know, accidents or DUIs or anything like that. My license is current also. So because I had that, I had a uh, current passport with me and my, uh, I've got my retirement visa. I don't think that was a requirement, but they told me that made a diff little bit of a difference. Uh, I paid, I want to say, let me think about this a second to get it right. I paid 4,000 baht, which came out to be about $160 to get both my motorcycle license and my car license. Now, I feel like that was a bargain because I was in Jom Tien and I only spent four hours to get these two licenses. Uh, I went in, I met at the agency. There were nine other guys there. I made some good friends. They put us all on a minivan, in a minivan, and we drove about an hour or hour and a half to a town called Rayong. And that's where there's a government office there, immigration, an office to get licensed. Uh, we unloaded, we went in, uh, we showed them. First thing they did was they gave us a little test to see how our depth perception was. Very simple, we sat down and we actually did this outside. They had a machine set up and a really nice guy, Thai man was there that was running it. And you'd go up and you'd sit on a chair and you were sitting maybe, oh, I don't know, 10 yards, or not 10 yards, maybe uh, 10 feet back from it and there were two items that looked like chopsticks and they would move like this and he would give you this little remote control like a game controller and on it it had a start button and then it had some up and down buttons and the idea was was to get whenever you hit start it took one of them all the way to the back then you'd sit there and use your up button fore and aft and bring it back and forth until you felt like they were exactly side by side then whenever you did that, you hit the stop button and there was a big screen next to it and it would place a green check if you had lined them up close enough and a red check if you didn't. And if you didn't, they would give you another opportunity. You could do it again So you, because it was kind of difficult because this was, they were uh, actual metal rods sticking up and sometimes they, it just didn't look quite right. But luckily, I hit it on the first go. So that was step one. We went over after step one, and we sat down, and we waited, and then they took us upstairs into a different area, and whenever we got up in that area, they went through and they checked our passport, they checked a couple other things, and our agency person was there taking care of all that. They'd already put together a little information packet for that, uh, I'm going to call them the Thai DMV, and that had all of our passport photos, it had some extra photo passport photos they'd already taken, at the agency. So they had all of this together, everything filled out for us. We didn't have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. And whenever our name was called, we went up and they had our passport, they had all the paperwork, and there were like three pieces of paper. And the lady at the Thai, the Thai DMV said, you know, sign here, please, and there and there. And I signed three papers. They put them back in, then they moved us to another room. So we go into this other room, and that's where we start taking some uh, the test. And it's very simple, there was nothing to it. In one of them, you sat down, there was lots of people in there, and we'd just line up in chairs and just systematically, one after another, go, 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 and do this. And they were just running us through really quick. You'd go up to the first machine and you would sit down, and they would have, there was a one light on the top of this machine, and it would be either green, yellow, or red, and it would change. And I believe it was 12 different times that, it may, I might be wrong on that, but I think it was 12 times you did, it was nine or 12. It would sit there and show a different color. Once again, you had a little controller in your hand, you had the start button, you were ready to start when you were ready, 
and they had three buttons and marked on the buttons it said red, yellow, green. Whatever color light you see, you hit the associated button. Red light, red light, and so forth. Below it was another screen and it had the rows blank like circles waiting for your response. When you gave the response, you either got a check mark in green or an X and a red. So they're te checking to see if you're colorblind, if you're going to be able to see and tell, you know, the difference in the lights. So you did that. Once you did that, you were done. You set, got up, and over to the other side of you was a reaction machine. They wanted to test your reaction from accelerating to braking. So there were two pedals on the floor, one for an accelerator, one for a brake. And in front of you, there was again a light and on the left side was a row of LED lights that ran up and down. And whenever you would hit, you would put your foot on the accelerator. And when you pressed down on the accelerator, you held it down. Now, you didn't know when it was going to happen. It, took, it could be a second. It could be a split second. It could be two or three seconds. All of a sudden, the light would turn red. And the second the light turned red, the LEDs on the left started climbing up. And there was, you know, like a green, a yellow, and a red area. And it was either like you were super quick, you passed okay, or you failed the reaction. You had to do that several times. So you'd hold it down, and you'd watch, and the minute you seen the red light, you had to use your right foot only, you'd raise your foot, and you'd hit your brake and hold the brake down. You didn't stomp it, you just pushed it down. And wherever that stopped, as long as you weren't in the red, she would have you, if you were up in the yellow, she'd have you do it more times just to be sure that there wasn't something wrong. If you were down in the green, like I, I had a good reaction time, so the minute I did my first one, and a lot of other people did also, if you had good reaction time and you hit in the green at the very beginning, she'd just say, okay, it's fine. From there, you went over and they did a test of your peripheral vision. On your peripheral vision, you set your chin on a little item, and on each side of you, you had, uh, of your eyes, there was a bar that was sticking up and there was going to be a light that shone on each side. You put your hand on two trigger buttons and the lady would start and whenever she would say, whichever side you see the light on, as soon as you see it, hit the button. And she would do it and they did it like three times. I, you know, you'd see a flash on this side, click. You'd see a flash on this side, click. You might see two flashes on this side, you know, click. And then another one, click and took about 10 seconds and once you pass that and plus you took if you had glasses you took your glasses off when you did it and your hat and once you did that she'd say pass and you were done so after that you went out and you went in to another room they gave you a Q number that had like you know one two three four on it for the different areas you went into this room you sat down and as and there were three cubicles and there were ladies and men sitting in those cubicles once it came up on my queue and i had my card and i seen which one i was supposed to go to cubicle uh, the agent helped us with that too i went over there and went in and it, there was a really nice thai girl in there and she set up i had a canon camera set up she uh, had my passport she had a couple other things sitting there and she went through the paperwork. She took the picture that to go into the driver's license and the motorcycle license. And after that, uh, that was it. So she had me then go out. And I left the cubicle and I went back out into the waiting area and I sat there. And then within about, oh, I would say maybe 15 minutes, the cards were printed out, which are right here. And I got my both my motorcycle and my driver's license. And that's one difference here in Thailand than the United States. United States, my driver's license has my motorcycle endorsement on it. In Thailand, you actually have two completely separate licenses. One is strictly motorcycle and one is vehicle. And you can tell which is which because on the back of them, one will have a little picture of a motorcycle and one will have pictures of little cars on it. So it makes it pretty easy to do. Uh, now here is what I'm told on them from the agent. The license, the first time a foreigner gets the license, the license is good for one year. 
Then after that, you go back and you renew the license, and I believe you do take the test again. They want to make sure your vision and everything's okay. But since you've already got your license, the process is much, much quicker. You're going to show your passport, your license. You really don't need an agent to do it unless you just want to have them drive you there. Uh, you go in and you reshow it, and the second time it's good for five years. So I went ahead and got mine uh, because I want to do multi-entry and, and I'm retired over here. I want to use it for uh, identification. And it was just something I felt like it, you know, I should do. If I'm, if I'm retired over here in Thailand and I'm going to live here half the year, I think I should follow their rules and try to do things, you know, as they do. Uh, so it, it was and for 100 and roughly 72 U.S. dollars. Uh, guys, it was that's super cheap if you think about it because they drove me an hour and a half one way in a really nice uh, brand new van. Uh, they stopped, they got us like coffee, they got us something to drink, they took us in, they already had our paperwork done, and they got our license in four days versus or four hours versus three or four days. So for me, you know, the 4,000 baht or whatever it was uh, was well worth it. So if you go to do that, uh, there's lots of agencies that do it, and I'm sure they're all about the same. Uh, they're located everywhere. They're in everywhere from you know Chiang Mai to Pattaya, just depending on where you're vacationing at that moment. And I highly advise, but I think it's a good idea to get it. You know, uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. You know, follow the rules, the regulations, and it's not that expensive. And I think you will find that it will behoove you if you ever get pulled over to have that Thai driver's license or motorcycle license. So with that said, I hope this helps. Sorry I've been gone so long, guys. I've just been so busy running, getting all these new licenses and doing new things. It's just been uh, difficult to have the time to sit down and take a day to make a video and then the editing time involved. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Please, guys, if you do, like, subscribe, and hit the bell. You know all that gig because it really does help me out, and the channel is still continuing to grow. And I want to see it, you know, get spread out. So, you know, send it to some other people and let them see if this will help them out if they plan on retiring over here. So, guys, this is Rick with Rick's Adventure. I'll see you all soon, and take care, everybody. See you guys.